My favorite aunt was Malki Ukransky, and we knew her, Mali. She was short and rounded, and she smiled all the time. She would pinch our cheeks for a kinohori. Aunt Molly sort of rolled into a room. Her son, Aaron, was much older than me, and I hardly knew him. He wasn't called Aaron by Aunt Molly. For her, he was Mency Defensy Giggledy Goo. <laughs> she would say, Mency Defensy Giggledy Goo, there your galoshes. It might rain someday soon. <laughs> In all our family dinners, all the big holidays, me and my brother and my two cousins would sit on stools in the living room and ask Aunt Molly to tell us stories about America. Well, she began, English is a very difficult language to speak. <laughs> For example, take the void beats. We say the word Borek, the right word. The others say beats. What is beats? It's very difficult. For example, beats is what a woman wears around her neck. <laughs> a string of beats. For example, it's a hot day. You go swimming on the beats. <laughs> and for example, when you don't like somebody, He's a no good son of a beat. <laughs> Aunt Esther wrote the family theme song when my grandparents, Louie and Esther, had their 50th wedding anniversary. It went like this. Louie, Louie, we've been thinking where on this fine earth we'd be if you hadn't married Esther and raised this fine family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> the older generation had trouble with American idioms. Oi, Malke, this Simus, it's out of this town. <laughs> it melts in my fork. <laughs> my grandmother used to say, Richie, if you don't be a good boy chick, I'll give you such a schmear in the punim that you wouldn't know from what country it came. <laughs> my grandparents lived in a small town outside of Boston. It was a summer resort town, and during the winter, it was like a deserted village after a tornado or a flood. Empty streets, boarded up houses. My grandparents' house was built on the sand off the beach, and the basement had a trap door that led to an under-the-house crawl space. And this was just plain beach sand, but I was always scared that immense sea spiders lived there, feasting on little boys like me. <laughs> My grandfather's eyes began to diminish as he got older, and he ultimately needed a large magnifying glass to read the paper. Uh, he could see the TV easily, but only watch certain programs. My grandmother loved to watch wrestling on TV and would sit there twitching and jumping with nervousness. Oi, they, look, they killed him. Louie, look, he's dead. <laughs> My grandfather never, ever responded. He had important things on his mind. In the sandy crawl space, he had about 35 glass jars filled with razor blades. You know, the old-fashioned kind with two edges you screw onto the razor? He bought them once from a drugstore going out of business, and he stored them in the basement. But after using one or two of them, his face broke out in a rash. He was convinced there was something wrong with the razor blades. He would take a large magnifying glass and hold the blade with a tweezer and examine it through the magnifying glass. He would stare at it under the sight of light of a lamp and say, see, this is a wireless. The wireless is on the blade. Look. He would hold my hand in his and put the magnifying glass at my eyes. Look, Richie, you can see the wireless. I couldn't see anything but a blur because the glass was too close to my face. And anyway, I was frightened that the wires from the sand in the basement would jump at me and chomp away. My grandmother was yelling, Oi, Louie, look, he's dead. He was yelling, don't move, you're going to get hurt. Louie, look, they killed him. He was saying, don't move, look, they killed him. I was thinking, what would get me first, the wires or the wrestling? <laughs> My grandmother would get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to bake and cook for the family. She would sit at the dining room table while we were eating and never touch a morsel of food. She 
was the vulture. She would see my Uncle Stanley, her youngest son, eating only one of the 300 sweet potatoes she put on his plate. <laughs> What's the matter? You sick? She would rise up like the phoenix, stroll over to him, and dump a hundred more sweet potatoes on his plate, <laughs> along with prunes and carrots. Now, eat. He had only one answer. Mama, you tried to kill me. <laughs> Aunt Ida was the most magnificent. She was an imposing woman with a high-pitched voice. Aunt Ida looked like her sister, my grandmother, but her bearing was regal. She stood, stood straight up when she walked, and Aunt Ida, this was the 1950s, wore an iron-pointed brassiere. Her breasts stuck out like the cannons on a warship. Her little mug and dovet star dangled on her neck like a teeny bird on a wire. Her breasts preceded her into the house five minutes before the rest of her life. <laughs> she would come in the front door, open her arms and screech, Nancy, my Nancy, come here, give me a big kiss on the punim. With delight mixed with dread, I would run forward into her arms. I couldn't take my eyes off the deadly pointed breasts. <laughs> and she would gather me up like I was a weightless nothing and squeeze me into her chest. I disappeared between the mountains. <laughs> I was lost. There was absolutely no give in the braziers. It was made of salvage cannon from the war. Richie, what's with you? She was holding me off the ground, but between her breasts and my feet, like a person being hanged, were dangling a foot from the ground. When she let go, I would drop to the ground and tell her, I'm fine, and she would give me a butterscotch candy. <laughs> Grandma Esther, Grandpa Louie, Aunt Ida, Malke, Hannah Belgi died many years ago. When my grandmother was still alive, she would sit beside me on the couch and go over the photos of those relatives from the old country, and she'd say, she's dead. He's dead. <laughs> she's dead. <laughs> She isn't dead, but she should be. <laughs> now, I'm the grandfather, sitting with my grandchildren, looking at the photos, and all I want to say is, he's dead, she's dead, they're all dead, but they shouldn't be. <laughs>